Who's going to win the NCAA Men's Frozen Four, and why is it going to be Brock Faber? We're going to talk about that today on a special crossover edition of Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, happy Thursday, and you're listening to Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. My name is Sarah Avampato, host of your show, and as always, glad to be here to talk about your favorite hockey team and mine, the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Yeah, we're going to talk all about prospects today, and by prospects, I mean Brock Faber. Uh, I've got a very special crossover episode. I teased it yesterday, but uh, it is here today. We are talking all about the men's Frozen Four, which is scheduled to uh, to really kick off in earnest tonight uh, with Minnesota versus Minnesota State. Uh, it is the uh, it, it's it's not for all the marbles. They got to win this one to get for the you know all the marbles. Uh, but that game kicks off. Today, Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, which would be, let's do some math, minus 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, So we're going to get to see Brock Faber in action tonight as he hopes to help lead his team uh, to the championship game. Uh, So on today's show, we've got some very special guests Erica Ayala, who is host of Locked on Kraken, uh, has been doing a lot of really cool work covering the Men's Frozen Four, and she's actually going to be in Boston uh, to cover it in person. So if you're looking for Men's Frozen Four content, first off, go head over to Locked on Kraken as she's been previewing all of the games. So today I talk with Erica Ayala. I talk with Jason Hernandez from Locked on Ducks because he's got some Ducks prospects uh, also on the Golden Gophers. And we talk with Kelly Schultz. Uh, who is very familiar with Minnesota hockey. Uh, We're going to learn all about what is going down in this game and get some predictions from all of us. So let's head right now to a pretty cool Locked on Kings Kraken Ducks Minnesota crossover. Hey, hey, what do you say, hockey fans? As promised, it is a full squad cast, so much that it's pretty much a roundtable, although we will be in a square configuration because of the magic of Restream. I am joined by Sarah Avampato, your host of Locked on Kings. Sarah, how are you? I am doing pretty good, and I'm excited to see our uh, square circle. Our little, yeah, our, little, our, our, our square roundtable. You know, (laughs) it's going to be a good time. Yes, indeed, indeed. So thankful to have you back on another Squadcast. We are joined also by Jason Hernandez, host of Locked on Ducks. Hey, hey. Ah, both of you are here. How's it going? (laughs) We're there. You're you're there. Yeah, I'm I'm doing the pointy like, hey, you're both here. (laughs) (laughs) Good to see you. Good to have you. We've we've got the, the Pacific Division holding it down here for this preview of uh, Minnesota State, Minnesota, and joined by a very special guest, although outside of the Locked On Network, very near and dear to me. I've been working with this one for a while, including making history. It's Kelly Schultz from Minnesota. How are we doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody from the state of hockey. It's actually snowing in Bemidji, Minnesota today, so a p- perfect for uh, Frozen Four the weekend. Ooh, I like what you did there. I see what you did there, Kelly. Fantastic. We appreciate you coming on. And Sarah and Jason, I know you have some specific prospects that you want to talk about, but for the first segment, we are going to focus on Minnesota State, the state of hockey. It's two teams, Kelly, from the state of hockey going head to head in the second semifinal. And uh, we're going to consider you the resident expert on Minnesota State in particular. Um, So why don't we get started with you telling us a little bit about this squad. I know that as someone who's called Bemidji State Games, um, I'm sure you've come across the Mavericks a time or two. Uh, What should listeners know about (laughs) Minnesota State hockey? Minnesota's best goaltenders I've witnessed in all my career, at least, in uh, Dryden McKay. 
He is unbelievable. His whole team feeds off of his energy, um, but he's got a team in front of him that's just absolutely loaded with a lot of talent. Nathan Smith, of course. Uh, I didn't have a chance when Bemidji State played Minnesota State. Uh, he was at the Olympics at that point, as was his head coach, Mike Hastings. But watching him here in this tournament, so far, uh, Nathan Smith, but they've also got a great defensive core. Uh, one of the guys that kind of is under the radar, but got a few mentions during the broadcast when I was watching, it was Akito Hiroshi. That guy is so strong. He plays a very heavy game, um, just a smart hockey player. They've got other guys on their squad that are just dominant the matchup between Minnesota State and Minnesota. They've got some history. Uh, the good news for Minnesota State is they've got better history. They beat the Gophers in the regional last or nothing and of course on seven of their last nine against the Gophers. So I don't know if that's going to be an effect. I mean these two teams are so different than they were a year ago. I, I really look at Minnesota State as being probably my favorite going into this first uh, semi our second semifinal game. Ooh, okay, the favorites, and you mentioned McKay. Um, not only uh, a, an amazing goaltender for Minnesota State, um, not only was the MVP for the Albany Regional, but also on the Hobie Baker hat trick uh, finalist list. Um, and so that's a pretty big feat there. Um, of course, let's talk about the all American and the stats. We see the record right there, Kelly, 37, four and Oh, on the season, nine, three, four save percentage two or excuse me, mm -hmm. 1.28 goals against average. Now, I mean, I don't know. That sounds pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> he is very good and I mentioned it like watching him between the pipes he just nothing really shakes him he gets down he somehow finds a way to pull himself together and his team plays in front of him so strong he's just so dynamic to watch uh, like I said one of the best years and I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up winning that Holby Baker. If not, he'll be up for the Mike Richter award. So, Yeah, amazing. Uh, is a senior from Illinois, 112, 19, and 4 NCAA career <laughs> record. That That's just like, I don't know that there are many teams that have that record. <laughs> that's amazing. That's absolutely no. amazing. Okay, no. Kelly. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> a lot of people in the CCHA are looking forward to him graduating and moving on to the. That's all we got to say. He's <laughs> incredible to watch. Just not incredible to play against. <laughs> Indeed. Wow. Wonderful. Uh, for for those, as you mentioned, in the conference, uh, Bemidji, I believe, included, because uh, there was that whole restructuring. I get confused now because it's not a like for like with uh, the WCHA anymore, which is uh, uh, we can bring you back for that one. I am very intrigued by by all of that. But um, OK, so I honestly don't know all of the college history here, but what are the odds that we see a goalie uh, be able to win that Hobie Baker award? I know on the women's side, it's very difficult. <laughs> oh, it is very difficult. Um, I don't know if it, how rare it is, <laughs> to be honest. You put me on the spot here. I don't know how many goalies I, I'd have to look Let's back at Hobie Baker, but um, he is pretty dominant. Right. So like I said, if he doesn't get the Hobie, the Mike Richter award, obviously, is he's one of the favorites yeah indeed also n worth noting that we mentioned those numbers and mckay undrafted um so not someone that is a prospect but mm -hmm. as i mentioned we have two other folks that we're gonna bring in here kelly that are gonna talk about the team that minnesota state is gonna take on and uh they do have some prospects coming up in in this uh game so why don't we hear from them kelly we're gonna bring you back in just a moment but um first 
though, Sarah and Jason, I want to have you react to what you heard from Kelly at talking about Minnesota State. I mean, a lot of times in hockey, we talk about how important dominant goaltending is. Do you think this is going to be something that becomes advantageous for Minnesota State as they face Minnesota in the semifinal? I mean, now I'm terrified of their goalie. <laughs> I, I don't think I had particularly seen uh, his stats this season. Uh, you know, they're not a team that I have a, a prospect on, so I haven't watched them that closely. Uh, but you read off those numbers, and I'm like, well, cool, cool, great. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm I'm not afraid at all. Okay. I'll tell you why. Because the Golden Gophers took out a very strong team in Western Michigan, not only beat them, they shut them out very well. And I got to give props to Justin Close filling in the shoes of someone that you've seen a lot of Sarah Jack LaFontaine filling in those shoes was a big ask so I got to give Justin Close a lot of credit for coming on strong his numbers are even better than LaFontaine if you can believe that mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So I want to save the good stuff for the next segment where we are going to talk all about the Minnesota Gophers. Again, we have Sarah, we have Jason, and we have, of course, Kelly Schultz joining us for this very special roundtable as we get ready for the men's Frozen Four. Now we had a first-time champion on the women's side, the Ohio State University. Uh, it's a lot of steeped history on the, on the men's side, so we'll see who takes takes home the title. Coming up next though, we're gonna focus on the Golden Gophers. All right, Kings fans, we're gonna talk about the big guy, Brock Faber, coming up right after this. But before we do that, let's talk bet online. Because if you are someone who is into the whole sports betting scene, if you're into taking chances and making wild predictions, BetOnline.net is here for you. It is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. On their site, you can find all the latest sports developments, including information on this week's Masters Championships. You can get odds, you can find podcasts and reviews for all the different leagues this season. BetOnline is, of course, your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And of course, if you go to their website, I was just on there the other day looking for uh, you know NHL information, and they have a whole ton of articles too. So it's not just numbers. You can also get to dig a little deeper into each of the sports and the big big events and major players so you can find out all that you need to make the best betting choices that you could make. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action. Bet online, it is where the game starts. And we're back for the second segment. Again, we have Kelly Schultz. Kelly, you were able to break down what's going on with Minnesota State. Sarah was saying she didn't know what, what they had facing in net, Minnesota, that is. So we'll see what happens. Jason says he's not scared. Kelly, we're going to take you off screen just for a moment because we're going to focus on the Minnesota Golden Gophers here. All right. So, Jason, let's start with you. You said, I ain't never scared, right? So let's go. What gives you confidence in this Minnesota squad to get past Minnesota State? I will just say off record, I did watch that game um, at work. I happened to have the TV on and decided to put it on that last game between the Golden Gophers and Western Michigan. I thought their goaltending looked spectacular on that game. Justin Close, I, I have looked at his stats pretty much all season long, and they eclipse LaFontaine. His goals against is only 1.8. His save percentage is also up there at a 9.29. He's looked spectacular, especially the last few games. I particularly look at his last game against Western Michigan because he was doing very good with his lateral movement. And I just think overall, he's a little bit more calm around the net. He doesn't play outside of the crease all that much compared to other goaltenders. He's just very calm, very cool. Will talk to his teammates at times. So I... I like his goaltending a little bit better, but I think Sarah has something to say about LaFontaine as well, who's no longer there, who's now in the Carolina system with the Wolves. But I, I look at both these goalies, and I think that Justin Close is a little bit more to the book, and I think that will fare well for them. Yeah, I feel like that's, it's a very weird situation that um, 
they have found themselves in this season. Um, Justin Close is in a role that he did not expect to be in uh, because they went into the season with Jack LaFontaine as the starter. He was in his third season. He is the captain of the team because in college hockey, your goalie can be your captain. Like, cool. Uh, LaFontaine doing fine uh, with Minnesota. Uh, and then he, so he is a prospect of the Carolina Hurricanes organization who at one point had literally every goalie under contract get hurt. Uh, they were down to like, they had like one guy in the NHL, uh, their AHL guys were basically like an e-bug and an ECHL guy. Like they had no one. And they essentially went to Jack LaFontaine, who was their only available prospect who could conceivably make the jump to pro in the middle of his season and said, do you want to play in the NHL? And so of course he says, yes. I mean, he has a, a, a long think about it because, you know, you're playing for one of the best college teams in the country. You know, you're going to have a shot at the frozen four, but NHL. Uh, so middle of the season, Jack LaFontaine leaves, uh, turns professional and hands the crease over. And it's you you wouldn't know that they just went through this very bizarre upheaval uh, in, in their net situation, because uh, like like Jason said, uh, it's been fine. Uh, you wouldn't know that anything bizarre happened. But I, I cannot think of any other time I've ever seen this happen of a player midseason just being like, yep, yeah, I'm out. And they needed him. They legit had no other goalies. He played. He made his NHL debut already because they had no one left to play. Wow, that is absolutely wild and bizarre. And so we'll take a look at Justin's numbers here. Yeah, games played throughout the career. Um, that's what we're looking at. So it's not like there's a lot of experience for career stats for Justin Close. I don't even think the website has fully updated <laughs> stats going in to this game. Like that's what's up there. So, I mean, that's 1920-2021. This is the 2021-22 season, just in case anyone was curious. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a wild, what a wild situation, but Hey, you take the the opportunities as they come and Minnesota is, uh, you know, taking that all the way to the frozen four. Um, another thing though, and I know I talked about it when I spoke to Jay in our first preview, but there's a lot of Olympic experience. I mean, another thing about these athletes and a lot of these teams is that they've had a little bit of experience, maybe not as uh, acute as what you just explained, Sarah, <laughs> but having players come in and out of the, the lineup because no NHL players um, at the Olympics means that you did get to see some of these guys at the Olympics. Um, so I know that uh, I'm going to bring Kelly back in here because, you know, you you mentioned Nathan Smith, um, obviously played for the United States, was one of the, actually with Maddie Beneers, was one of the people that um, was kind of touted around pre-Olympics to uh, get the team going. But you also have several Olympians on the Gophers as well. I mean, Ben uh, Myers, um, Matthew, how do you say it? Knees? Knees? I don't know. And Brock Faber. So I want to take you, let's talk about Brock. <laughs> let's talk about Brock. Sarah, I believe that's your department. <laughs> that is. Uh, he is one of the most highly touted defensive prospects the Kings have in their system. Um, you know, I just got done saying that I haven't seen any player leave midseason to go to their to their NHL team to start their contract. But uh, the Kings right now, they're getting healthier. But at one point, they had one guy left on defense who had been their opening on their opening night roster. And the rest were AHL call ups because everyone had gotten hurt. And people are sitting there looking at the Frozen Four, looking at the, the men's college tournaments going like, we know we know Minnesota's good, but maybe they could lose. And then because the, the everyone knows essentially that as soon as his season is done, Brock Faber is signing a deal to turn pro that everyone thinks he is. Um, he has been a huge part of this team. Uh, but, you know, Kings fans, they want to see him go the whole way. They want to see him win the championship. But they also were a little bit like, but they could lose and he could come here and play for us and it'd be great. Uh, but, you know, he has been a huge part of that team. I feel like if you look at anyone talking about, you know, players to watch or keys to success for Minnesota, uh, it, it's kind of one of those things as Brock Faber goes, so is this team going to go. Um, he, on defense, he's a fantastic skater. Uh, he has kind of a, his, I would say his game is simple. It's not, he's not flashy. He's not going to wow you with like crazy trick shots or anything, but um, he, he's been a standout at college. He was, you know, 
it was unfortunate that the U.S. Olympic team didn't get to go uh, very far because he was already playing the most minutes in many of those games for a U.S. defenseman uh, as one of the younger players out there. So it's a little bit of what could have been, but he's a very exciting prospect. Um, and K Kings fans are like, man, well, he's here now, so might as well just win the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if he's not going to be with us, might as well, right. you know, win something. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. All right, Kelly, I want to come to you because you come from the college game. Uh, you call college hockey, both women's and men's side. So the, the there's a difference, though, in what we see from what Sarah was talking about as far as um, players coming in and out or being offered that opportunity. Um, but it's also different when there is an opportunity for college players to play in the Olympics, because as far as I know, on the men's side it's not like they um they sit out a year and then have that left as eligibility they go to the olympics they do their thing there and then they come back so uh you know what can you say about what it's been like over the years to cover some mm -hmm. of those college athletes on the men's side that have come back and forth well it's been great to watch um like i said i didn't have a chance to watch nathan smith in person uh again He's missed six games because of the Olympics. He comes back and he leads his team with 50 points. Um, to me, it just that experience he gets as an Olympian is priceless, basically. And the fact that he was coached by his college coach at the Olympics is even bigger, um, you know, consistency for him. But it has been fun to watch. I love that they pulled the college kids into the Olympics rather than the pros. I think it's a great experience, a world stage, um, or the, the pros, they've already got that playing in the NHL or the AHL or whatever. But I think it is, I mean, let's go back to the 1980s, amazing <laughs> men's Olympic year I think I've ever witnessed. Of course, I was, and uh, I won't tell you how old I was, but I <laughs> remember watching it and uh it was kids i mean i'm from the state of her brooks so you know <laughs> it's what it is yeah, indeed, indeed. Very cool experience to see some of those young guys. As Sarah mentioned, USA didn't quite um, advance the way they wanted. I thought they looked really good, really strong, just came up against just, you know, a, a team that wasn't really w ready to go home yet. That That's them's the breaks. And I don't know where Maddie Beneers was in the shootout, but, uh, you know, maybe I'm biased. Who knows? Locked on Kraken host. Who knows? got to be there in beijing china just to see well not just but to i was i was at the, i will say i was at the men's tournament only for maddie veneers with respect to everyone else but the only reason i i i upset my sleep pattern was to watch maddie veneers um he had a great tournament though but all right jason you've got some prospects with uh with some opportunity also uh here so let's talk about what the ducks are, are thinking so i don't know it sounded like there might it sounded like the kings fans are now okay <laughs> with Faber staying, but for a while there, maybe they were teetering. What's, what's the vibe from the Ducks fan camp? <laughs> ah, that's their vibe right now. <laughs> they just traded away half their team for a lot of draft picks. So that's their vibe right now. Sad to say. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. We can relate. <laughs> exactly. So oh, there's, our there's one defenseman in particular that I know Ducks fans are kind of salivating over watching. And that is Jackson Lacombe, who, by the way, I'm trying to get my hair as curly as <laughs> Jackson. Not quite as blonde, but almost as curly. He is the prime defenseman for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. In fact, leading all defensemen in Minnesota right now with 30 points, three points and 27 assists. But he's kind of a prototypical, just great hands, good puck sense, good on special teams as far as Lacombe is concerned. And a great junior and by the way sir i don't know if you saw him but he also played for the chicago steel back in the ushl though so that might be a name that you recognize sarah from back in the day yeah both of your guys him and uh mclaughlin right yeah yeah that's the other one there it is boys. yeah look at that flow i don't know i don't know if you if you if you got the sauce for that jason I'm, I'm respectfully i don't know that anyone does that is 
that is serious. Wow. That's a beautiful <laughs> head of lettuce. I'm not going to lie there. It really is. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, Lacombe, you've got another one. All right. <laughs> yeah, so a uh, little bit more on Lacombe. So uh, his defensive play, I think, could help the Ducks further on. And when you talk about a guy that I think could be very good for a second-round pick back in 2019. By the way, same draft as some guy that's also a Duck. That That's really good. I, I think he had a lacrosse goal or two. Same draft. I say the Ducks drafted well there. Uh, they just brought up another defenseman that was playing in college, and that is Drew Hellison. Drew Hellison just made his debut with the San Diego Gulls, got his first point last weekend against Tucson Roadrunners. So that's another defenseman that the Gulls just brought up. And the reason for that is because the Ducks traded away all their guys or all their other guys got hurt. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, yeah, sorry, there's no more Josh Manson, among other players. <laughs> So San Diego's looking to get some guys back because they can't rely on Jacob Larson all the time. So I, I know Ducks fans are saying, oh, it's a shame that Minnesota won again. We really want to see Lacombe make his professional debut. Oh, darn. <laughs> but he's one of the heart and soul players of that team. And someone else, Sarah, that I know you're familiar with, Blake McLaughlin. How can you not be excited about Blake McLaughlin? I feel that's one of the steals in that third round 2018 draft. When you think about a guy that went all the way down to number 79, and he is right now almost leading his team in points. In fact, he is number two in points for the Golden Gophers this season, 33 points, right behind Ben Myers. But I, I like McLaughlin's game a lot. Um, he's got some clutch goals this season, including, by the way, a very important goal against Western Michigan, who they just shot out. So I look at both of these guys, their style, I mean, McLaughlin's style is he's very good at puck protection. He's good at finding open shots. I wouldn't say he's a shot first kind of guy, but he's someone that can get to the open spots when he needs to. So I cannot wait to see him possibly play with the Ducks later on. I would say probably the goals more likely. But I would like to see him make his pro debut pretty soon. And Jackson Lacombe especially. I am super, super excited about Lacombe coming down here to sunny SoCal, playing for the goals later this season. Can't wait. I but mean, I don't know. That golden hair. Got to win the title first. <laughs> got to win the title first. That golden hair in sunny, sunny Southern Cali. That's Ooh. a lot. That's going to look good. <laughs> <laughs> that's going to that's gonna be pretty sharp, not going to lie. Got to make sure to invest in some solid sunblock, though, for the rest of it. I think the, the curls, the coils, <laughs> the tress is going to be amazing. Just got to make sure everything, the skincare routine has got to be on point. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do the shake head like thing, but it's so hard. Yeah. Like on the beach, like the wind flowing through his hair, like the sand, like the spray of the ocean. Like he's perfect. He's perfect for Southern California. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Amazing. Amazing. All right. Well, coming up next on the show, in addition to all of us sharing our hair care routine, we are going to give our predictions <laughs> for the Frozen Four. <laughs> oh, this is amazing. <laughs> oh, all right, hockey fans, we are back. All right. Hold on. Let me do that again. <laughs> Awkward cough. <laughs> All right. All right, hockey fans, we are back for our third and final segment of this square roundtable talking about the men's Frozen Four. This is the semifinal two preview, Minnesota State versus Minnesota. Of course, we have the amazing Kelly Schultz, Sarah Avampado, and Jason Hernandez joining me on this show. I should probably say who I am. My name is Erica Ayala. I'm your host of Locked on Kraken. I am kind of running this round table because all three of these people are definitely amazing and do the hockey. And I trust them with maybe not my life, but certainly with my hockey knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now it's time. We're going to go around the horn. Uh, we opened 
the show with Kelly. So we're going to give you a reprieve. You'll get to have the last word on this. So Jason, let's start with you. We've got these two teams going head to head. Not only what do you see in semifinal number two, but who do you think the winner of this semifinal is going to play on Sunday? Yes, on Sunday for the national championship. This is tough to call because I actually saw a little bit of Minnesota State. And yes, I'm I'm still not scared, but I'm slightly concerned because of how well they did against Notre Dame and Harvard. But I looked at the last game of Minnesota and they were just clicking on all cylinders. And I think Western Michigan was one of the best teams in the tournament outside of Michigan. So I'm going to say Minnesota, but only by one goal. I think it's going to be a tight game. It's going to be a close game, more of a defensive battle. I think Lacombe could be a factor defensively on this one. And I wouldn't be surprised, by the way, going to call my shot if McLaughlin gets a game-winning goal. So I'm going to say 2-1. to one. All really right, 2-1. to one. And I'm also going to give a shout-out, by the way, to another golden gopher right now who's got some lineage, and that would be... Bryce Brodzinski, who's the youngest of the Brodzinski brothers. By the way, Sarah, Michael Brodzinski played for the San Jose Barracuda. And Sarah, <laughs> Johnny Brodzinski, you're familiar with him, right? I am. I am. They couldn't figure out a way to make him work. But now he's a Ranger. Yeah. We don't talk about the Rangers. Well, uh, yeah, but two to one. Two to one. Two to one. All right. Okay. Before I let you go. Who do you have them playing in the natty? It has to be Michigan. It has to be the Wolverines. They have too much talent on their team. I just have to call it like it is. I mean, no offense to Denver. I think Denver is an extremely good team. By the way, shout out University of Denver. Uh, pride of Troy Terry. Just saying. But, <laughs> man, Min Minnesota just looked really good their last couple of games. I mean, there was some... I mean, there was some cracks in the armor against Quinnipiac. Mm -hmm. And no, you yep. know what? No, I'm going to change my oh. mind. Oh. Change what? Denver over Michigan. Denver Ooh. over Michigan. Ooh. 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 All right. Spicy. All right. I'm going to be spicy. On that, note, on that note, I'm taking you off the screen. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sarah, you're up. <laughs> uh, not that I'm biased. Absolutely not. I just All right. So... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely going with the Golden Gophers to to take this one. Um, I, okay. I, for many of the same reasons that Jason said, you know, I think that they're kind of all clicking on, on the same cylinders. I think that they have they have gotten to the point where they've seen what they have to do to win, uh, mm -hmm. and I think that they everyone is dialed in. Um, Bob Motzko is a fantastic coach, uh, has just a long legacy of being really great, uh, and, and would love to see him get this team over the hump. So I I, I think that. Uh, the Golden Gophers come away winners, but I also think it's going to be a close game. I don't think it's going to be um, a blowout uh, in either way. Uh, and my my take, I'm not going for the spicy take. It's Michigan. It, it's <laughs> it's Michigan. You 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 look at that roster. Uh, you there's there's so many of them. They're all so good. It's not fair. It's not fair. <laughs> It's a pretty stacked team. It's kind of like uh, an all-star team coming together. I think it's also been interesting. Um, obviously, I know, and I'm hearing the stories more from, you know, the locker room adjacent in these COVID times, but, you know, hearing the conversations around the team about how they really – um, wanted to make a run. A lot of them having a feel that they would get an opportunity to be drafted. And that obviously changes things in the short term for them. Um, but they really felt like a team, you know, Maddie Beneers in, in his first season and um, wanted to to have a go. So, I mean, that's pretty powerful. That being said, I, I, I know I took him off screen, but I have to admit that there have been some scary moments with the Wolverines. Uh, so I think it's going to be about discipline for them for sure. Um, all right. So it's, it's, it's a, you know, split decision so far. So we'll bring in our, our next guest here. Sarah has <clears throat> said her piece, Kelly, it's your turn. <laughs> Who you got? All right. This is it. Uh, I really think Minnesota State is going to win. They're bringing in Dryden McKay, who is got so much experience in these big games. I think uh, you look at the Gophers. 
just their lack of experience on them. Uh, plus the Mavericks have four guys with more than 40 points. They've scored a lot more goals than the Minnesota golfers this year in Minnesota State. I think it's going to be a a shutout for McKay, and I think they're going to win by two or three goals. Ooh, okay. Two or three goals. Oh, the shock. Let's bring them on. The shock. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. All right. We're taking him back. Jason, you back the back. gophers are so strong. Uh. <laughs> All right, so you, you gave us your semis, but now who does Minnesota face in the Natty Championship and who ultimately gets to take home the prize? Mm. I, th <laughs> I think Minnesota State is going to end up playing. It's so stacked. I'd love to see Denver win, but there's a part of me that just knows Michigan has, just has so much talent. I mean, Erica, you and I heard the Hughes name. Well, Michigan fans know Luke oh, Hughes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he has been so, so good. I think it's going to be a really close game. Yeah, I think that one's going to be pretty close. I think, again, it's going to come down to the team that makes the fewer mistakes, and that might be Denver. I think they have a team that could definitely um, upset Michigan. But at the end of the day, I think Michigan does have a pretty solid goaltender, and they can pretty much score at will, and I think that will be a difference maker. I think they're going to get it together. I think they're going to get it together. I don't think they're going to leave too much room um for for denver to kind of squeak in there um I, I think they have that that they can level up that game and and really just uh stay focused that's what they gotta do is stay focused all right everyone well we went around the horn um i i already said this but i'll let you know i'm going michigan all the way through i also let people know though when i started the locked on kraken show that i am a mush as in from you know the movie a bronx tale so maybe i should pick somebody else <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should pick someone else if I really want Michigan to win. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. Um, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Michigan, and I'm gonna take Minnesota State. I kind of like that storyline. I think that could be really great. Michigan, kind of the team that everyone's expecting. Minnesota State. I kind of feel like they might feel some kind of way going into this Frozen Four. I kind of feel like they might feel a little disrespected, and I'm not sure that they should, given some of the stats and facts that we've talked about. But either way, we'll see how it goes. I will be there in Boston. I'm very excited um, to be covering the men's Frozen Four for the Locked On Kraken show and as an extension of the Locked On NHL show. But for Jason Hernandez of Locked On Ducks, for Sarah Avampato of Locked On Kings, and my very special friend, Kelly Schultz from Women's Hockey at Bemidji State, and of course, the Premier Hockey Federation broadcasts. I am Erica Lindsay Ayala, your host of Locked On Kraken. We're gonna close out this square roundtable. Jason's got a friend. Oh, I see a PHF shout out there. We've got everyone in the screen. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you're a Seattle <laughs> Kraken fan, look fast, stay true, and let's wait till Maddie Veneers gets out of Michigan. <laughs> All right, everyone, that is it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you uh, to everyone for joining the show, to Erica and to Jason, and uh, to, of course, our extra special esteemed guest, uh, Kelly, for talking all about Michigan hockey. That is it for today. Thank you so much. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll talk about whatever it is the Kings do, injury updates, all that great stuff. If you're looking for the Frozen Four games, again, those are tonight, April 7th. Uh, taking place in Boston, Michigan and Denver. The game we don't really care about is at 5 p.m. Eastern, Minnesota State and Minnesota, 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Uh, that game is going to be on ESPNU, so make sure to check it out. National Championship is on Saturday, 8 p.m., going to be on ESPN2, so cross your fingers that Brock Faber makes it all the way to the championship, takes home an award. 
and comes to join us in California. Thank you so much for listening. This has been another episode of Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.